Good morning and welcome Crossroads family. We are so glad that you are here today. I know that church looks a little bit different today, but we hope that you are staying safe and warm at home. And we look forward to being able to gather together again next week when hopefully the weather is a little bit better. Regardless, we are so glad that you're here and we ask that you please take a moment to fill out the connection card online so we can see all who are worshiping here with us today. It is a new year, and oftentimes new years come with new resolutions. And maybe you made a new year's resolution to get closer to the Lord, or read your Bible more, spend more time in scripture. And I want to share with you something that might be able to help you in that journey. There is an app called Through the Word, and that app is an audio guide that takes you through the Bible. Pastors read scripture to you and they explain it along the way and help you make connections through other parts of the Bible. It helps to draw more of a depth and understanding in an easier to understand way of your Bible. It's a Bible on your screen and a pastor in your head. It helps take your understanding to a whole new level. It's easy to follow and easy to understand. When you download the app, and again, it's called Through the Word, it starts with an introduction lesson. And that lesson explains how to use the app, what all the features are on the app, and even helps you find a plan that might be good for you to start with. It's a great way to help start this good habit, this new year, and this new resolution, diving in deeper to the Lord's Word. So I hope you get to check it out sometime this week. Again, thank you so much for being here with us today. We hope to see you next week and enjoy our service. We sing this morning to a great God who is worthy of our praises. Let's lift him up. You are my vision. You are my vision, O King of my heart. Nothing else satisfies only you, Lord. You are my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, your presence my life. You
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Crossroads, it's good to be with you today. Have you ever spent any time just sort of thinking through all the things that you love about Jesus? One of the things that I think about when I think about all the things I love about Jesus is how invitational he was. Uh, when you look at the calling of the disciples, uh, it was follow me 
or come and follow me. It's always an option. It's always a choice. It's highly invitational. And if you make a decision to follow Jesus and then God continues to do a great work in you, growing you, maturing you, making you a person of spiritual depth and maturity, it's always invitational. Uh, it, it's day by day, often moment by moment, choices to follow Jesus and his way or choices to go our own way. And that whole thing about spiritual maturity, uh, spiritual death, that whole part of discipleship, uh, we often refer to it as Christ's character being formed in me, Christ's character being formed in you. And it's a process. And there's this term sanctification that we'll use to talk about it. But it's not a once and done thing. It's a lifelong journey of Jesus being formed in us, that our lives are being transformed, being changed, so that we better reflect Jesus again and again. Uh, the New Testament term we have is that we are Christ's ambassadors. And you know what an ambassador is. Uh, it's the person who goes to a foreign land, but they are to represent their home country well, the interests, the attitudes of their home country in a foreign land. And you and I are called ambassadors, and that's Christ's character being formed in us as we reflect Jesus well and display him well to a world around us. That whole process of growing maturity, of character being developed and formed in us, it reads like this. In 2 Corinthians, we have these words. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. In other words, when we accept that invitation to grow, to mature, to develop, we become more and more like Jesus, and we're changed, we're transformed. And that word changed, I mean, most of us have like a love-hate relationship with that word. Uh, sometimes you'll hear somebody say, well, you know, there's this percentage of people that, you know, love change and this percentage of people that hate change. But I often think the reality is more like this. We love the end result of change. It's the process that we don't always love. Think about it like this. You're going to remodel your bathroom. You're going to love the end result. It's all the hard work through that process. You're trying to eat healthier or get healthier or whatever else. You're going to love the end result. But man, that process, it's pretty hard. It's pretty difficult. We don't love the process. But building character, developing character, it's a process. Spiritual formation is a process. And it's always invitational to partner with the Holy Spirit and the work that he wants to do in our lives and developing, growing us and maturing us. You and I always have the option to say yes or to say no. It's a process that happens over time. And here's the thing about character. When it's lacking, it's noticeable. And like when the tough times come, when the hard times come, man, character is so evident, so on display. Maybe you know somebody, a, a man or a woman, and you know, life gets tough. Life gets difficult, man. They're a husband or a wife, and life gets difficult in their marriage. Or man, maybe they're a, a dad or, or a mom, and Life gets difficult with the kids. And when you saw someone just walk away from their family or walk away from their marriage, terminology we'll often use is that person is lacking character. Maybe you know of someone who's like uh, had a moral failure uh, and their sin became evident, it became public, but they didn't own it. They tried to rationalize, justify it, explain it, lie it away. They didn't try to make anything right. We'd refer to that person as being someone who is lacking character. Maybe you know someone and there's a consistent gap between what they say they believe or what they say they're going to do and the way that they live and operate. And there's this gap. And we'd say that person is lacking character character. Now, just to make sure we're on the same page as we begin this series on building character, building character doesn't mean that you are perfect. That's not what it is about at all. 
If you're like me over the recent years, uh, in my headspace, I often think about King David. And and in the light of a cancel culture, uh, in the light of, you know, Me Too movement, you have to go back and revisit David's story. Something that's worth sorting through for you. I mean, David, if if you're not familiar with the story, he was at the he was the top dog, ultimate position of power. And he used that power to have an affair, and then there was deceit, and then there was murder, and, and there was then there was a cover-up. And God didn't cancel David. I mean, why is that? I mean, that makes some of us uncomfortable, right? What was it about David that he could go through all of that and not be canceled by God? He could stay in power over God's nation. See, David gets called out by God. David gets called out by God in all of his sin. It becomes evident, it becomes public when the, the prophet comes to him and says, hey, this is what you have done. And in those moments, David had a choice, didn't he? I mean, he could continue to lie, cover up, deceit, or he could own it. And man, David owned his sin. David owned all the wrong that he had done. His heart was broken before God. And he dealt honestly with himself, and he dealt honestly with his sins and all the consequences that came from his sin. We see a bit of David and how he deals with this. One of the places you see with that is Psalm chapter 51. I just want to read the very first section to you. You get an image of David's heart, of David's character. You see that he's a man of integrity and how he owns and deals with the sin. He cries out, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, just blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me. It haunts me day and night. Now, when people talk about David, when God talks about David, he's never referred to as, hey, that man lacks character. Because he was able to own and deal honestly with himself and his sin. He mourned his sin. Now, just just imagine, let's let's have a little bit of fun and bring King David into our time and into our culture. Make him the president of our country. Repeat the same series of sins. What would be David's temptation? Rationalize, justify, cover up, lie about it, get the people in power around him to continue to sell his lie? I mean, those are the temptations that David would have. But those are the same temptations that David had thousands of years ago. But because he was a man of character, a man of integrity, a man after God's own heart, he dealt honestly with his sin. He owned it. He didn't try to hide what was going on. Come on, David could have had that prophet killed but he didn't david owned what was going on in his life and in case this isn't clear if david would not have dealt honestly with his sin if david hadn't been a person of integrity he would have been lacking character he would have been out of line with the will of his heavenly father. David's story would be told quite differently because scripture doesn't hide the sin. Scripture doesn't hide the ugly parts of life. David's story would be told so much differently. His reputation would be so incredibly different in the way that you and I talk about him. You might even think about it like this. David would have been canceled by God if he wouldn't have owned his sin and dealt honestly with himself. So how do you and I, 
How do you and I become people of character? How do we partner with the Holy Spirit in allowing that character be, to be grown, to be formed in us? I think Psalm 51 gives us a great starting point. It's an open invitation to be honest with ourselves, to be honest with God. To simply own our shortcomings and our sins. No negotiations, no compromise, just saying yes to what God asks of us and then following through. Billy Graham has this to say about character. He says, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. But when character is lost, all is lost. I mean, Mr. Graham's making a pretty huge statement. I mean, is he overselling the importance of character? I don't think so. What was it? Just a little bit more than a year ago. For those of you that are familiar with Ravi Zacharias and his ministry and it was, I think, Christmas Eve when that initial report came out about these are some of the things that had happened in his life, some, some great moral failures, some sin. And just talking and telling people about what I was reading, they're like, I can't believe it. That can't be true. And I'm like, it's pretty clear. And this is from his family. This is from his organization. And sure enough, they said later on, a few more weeks, the full report would come out. And that full report came out. What happened to that ministry is a global ministry. Employed tons of evangelists and apologetics. It simply ceased to exist. If you haven't Googled Ravi Zacharias Ministries lately, just go to their homepage and, and see what is posted there. A Jesus-centered ministry suddenly came to an end. When character was lacking. Character is so foundational to you and to I. God takes it seriously and he would love for us to partner with him. To partner with the Holy Spirit and allow him to develop and build Christ's character in us. I mean, we live in a culture where it all too often feels like truth is relative. Our world needs Jesus followers who are people of character, people of integrity. Not perfect people or people who pretend to be perfect, but people who deal honestly with themselves, their shortcomings, and their sins. So we're beginning this series on building, on developing character. And it's going to be an interrupted series. That means that there will be some weeks where there's already some things scheduled where you won't be hearing about character those weeks. But what I really want you to understand and see is that it's an invitational series. Throughout the series, God is simply inviting you in. There's some work he'd love to do in the state of your soul. There's some character formation that he would love to do with you. But will you, will, will I say yes, will we partner with the Holy Spirit and let him form Christ's character in us? Here's some questions I would love us to continue to sort through in the weeks to come. How is your character being formed? By the culture around you or by Jesus? How is your character being formed? By the people that you're following? That might be your news feed, your friends, the social media? By what all of those people are saying? Was your character being formed by the truth of Scripture revealed in the person, life, and ministry of Jesus Christ? The question that's often asked is, is character formed in hard times or is character revealed in the tough times? And I think the most honest answer is yes. It's both and and so much more. Because where God really forms our character in the difficult times, it happens also day by day, often moment by moment. And the invitation to follow Jesus or to go our own way. So what is character? 
what is character? It's sometimes hard to define, but let me give you a definition here. Character can be defined as a collection of personality traits within our behavior that shows who we are. This is seen in our integrity, attitudes, moral fiber, disposition, and how we treat those around us. But it's so, so much more. Character has to go much deeper than that. Character is who we are because of our relationship with Christ. It is something that can be built and learned as we follow him. Maybe this will help clarify it a little bit. Uh, My mentor, Martin Sanders, would often say it like this. He would say, your reputation is what people think of you, what they know you for. Your character is who God knows you are. And the key is to bring both of those things into alignment. That's character formation. That's Christ being formed in us. So so let's start to dig into how is character built in you and how is character built in me. And we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. I want to start off with verse 23 because this is a foundational piece for how character is formed in you and I. Apostle Paul says like this, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. In other words, invite the Holy Spirit in. It's invitational. Let, allow. You have a choice. I have a choice. Let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Your thoughts, that's not just simply what you think about. It's also how you think about things. Your attitudes, how you view the world around you, the people around you, how you deal with and think about your circumstances, both the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly. And it's a partnership. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to do this work, to change the way that you think. I love how the contemporary English version states it, It says, let the Spirit change your way of thinking. This isn't something that you do on your own. This is something that God does in you. When you and I say yes to following Jesus and allowing him to do a transformational work in our lives. So building character begins. How does building character begin? Building character begins with new thinking. You can't transform yourself. I can't force myself and transform myself to be more and more like Jesus. It's something that the Holy Spirit does in us. And if you and I really want to change, develop, mature, and grow to men and women after God's own heart, we need to change the way that we think and invite the Holy Spirit in to do just that. Let's go back just a few versions in Ephesians chapter 4. Apostle Paul says it like this. He said, With the Lord's authority I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds, their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Look at this one line. They they have no sense of shame. Allow a person's name or a, a face to come to your mind. Somebody who has no sense of shame. That's a person who is lacking character. And it often begins when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to renew or guide the way that we think. Instead, we look to the way of the world. When we remove God from the equation, we want to go our own way. We want to go the way of culture, and we end up hopelessly confused. We shut ourselves off from the power of God and all the things that God would love to do in and through our lives. And we begin to live for ourselves, and that might be pleasure, it might be materialism, it might be power, it might be 
fame. In other words, the way that we think is much more transformed by what the world has to say about us than what God has to say about us. We view things like money, sex, and power from a worldly viewpoint. And also often those things are in direct opposition to the way that God would like us to think and view those exact same things. Another passage that teaches this truth is in the book of Romans. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let me be blunt on this partnership with the Holy Spirit, allowing Christ to be transformed and built in you. If you want to be transformed, you can't be conformed. You can't conform to the ways of the world. You want to allow God to develop and grow you as a man or woman after his own heart. And you can't do this on your own power. You'll get stuck every single time. Some of you know that uh, back Christmas Day that afternoon, our family flew out to Florida to visit family down there. And for us, it turned out to be a week of sunshine and COVID. I don't think that'll sell as their new slogan. That's just what it was for our family. And one of my favorite stories from that week, and I've told you, it's a story that, you know, we will be telling uh, for decades to come. Uh, it was my last full day in Florida, and we were taking a, a boat out, and we showed up at the pier at 8 a.m., and the fog was just thick. And so for the next hour and a half plus, we had to just sit there. We weren't released because you couldn't see anything around you. Finally, an hour and a half plus passed by and the fog's cleared just enough that they release us. So we go, we're gunning at full throttle. We have limited time. And I said that I'll navigate. Now, come on, I've been in this water before. Sailboat's much larger, deeper hull. I know what I'm doing. Come on, it is simply, you know, green going, red returning. I know how all of this works. Five minutes in, the fog rolls back in, and it is thick. You can't see a thing. I'm not looking at the charts. I'm not doing my job of navigating. I'm paying no attention, right? Because I've been there, done that before. I'm going my own way, what I think is right, what I think is best. And all of a sudden, the boat just lurches to a stop. And we're stuck on a sandbar. Just stuck. Whenever we try to go our own way, to do our own thing, thinking that we know better. I had a perfectly good navigational chart right there that recorded where all the different depths of the water are. Paid no attention to it because I was sure I knew exactly what I was doing. And isn't that the way for you and I? We go through life, and man, sometimes we're just gunning it because we got so much we want to do, so much we want to accomplish, so much we want to experience. We don't slow down, and we don't look into God's Word, and we're trying to do things on our own strength, doing what we think is right, what we think is best, doing what we want. And so often that leads to you and I being conform to the culture around us, being caught up in how the world views us and what other people have to say about us, not spending time with God, just soaking Him in, just accepting the invitation to follow Him and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform our lives, to build and develop the character of Christ in us simply get stuck and it feels like we're going nowhere. It feels like we're people that don't have any significant depth or maturity or growth. But 
God wants so much more for you and so much more for I. Desires is to be in that loving relationship with us. That day-by-day partnership. But it is always invitational. God doesn't force his way on you or on me. We always have a choice. Say yes to God to follow him. Or go our own way to do what we want, to do what we think is best. God wants to use the truth to make you and I complete in Him. So, what is that truth? What's the secret to getting God's truth? What's the secret to allowing that transformational process to happen in us. Another key to building character is learning and living the truth. That secret to change, it's not willpower, it's not resolutions, it's not pill power. The secret to personal change, both the good times and the hard times of life, is simply being in tune with God and knowing and living his truth. And God's truth is revealed throughout Scripture. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus, you learn and you live by the new covenant. It's your foundation. It's it's your baseline. It's your primary operating instructions for life. And you apply anything that goes against that baseline and, and you know that it's simply not from God. So maybe you're tempted to hurt someone. You feel like you're going to hurt somebody. Anyway. Man, it's going to be with your words. You're going to like post something on social media, uh, that next family gathering. When you get back to school, when you're back in the workplace, you're going to hurt someone. That doesn't measure up. That doesn't line up at all with the baseline of the truth of God revealed throughout the New Testament, throughout Scripture. You know it's a lie that you're wanting to believe and follow. It's not the truth that you're following. Maybe you're tempted to hurt yourself. But man, your baseline says that you are greatly loved by your Heavenly Father. You're created in His image. To hurt yourself would be to follow a lie, to go against the truth of God. Maybe for you, you've been hurt or you've been harmed so much, uh, that voice inside your head or maybe even the voices around you that are saying, man, you should never forgive that person. You're tempted to just live in anger or bitterness. It's completely against that baseline of what we know the truth is is revealed throughout Scripture. Maybe you're tempted to get revenge. You think it'll just make you feel so much better. But it goes against that baseline of the truth of Scripture of what you know and what you're meant to live. Maybe you're tempted to live for yourself. I mean, come on, it's been all of your hard work. It's your stuff. It's all about you. Why shouldn't you just enjoy everything for yourself? Why shouldn't it be all about me, me, me? It simply goes against the baseline of what we're taught throughout Scripture to serve and to love one another, to care for one another, to not be self-centered, but to be others-centered and God-centered. Maybe you're in a situation where the temptation is to lie or to manipulate or to deceive but you know that goes against the baseline of all that is taught throughout scripture and go those ways would be to be conformed to the world and not to allow the holy spirit to transform and develop and build character and depth of maturity in your life ephesians chapter 4 Verses 14, just go back a little bit. We see the impact of this foundation of truth in our lives. Reads like this. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever that they sound like truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more 
and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. If you're ever struggling to spot a lie, you get a lot of insight right here. Lies rarely have any love in them. And lies don't lead you and I to becoming more and more like Christ, like having his character developed and built in us. Why is the truth so incredibly important? Believing and living a lie leads us away from Christ. Lies of the enemy are designed to deceive and to destroy. Our enemy is clever and he he loves to pull us away from God. Man, these past two years, the amount of people who have just walked away from Jesus or walked away from his bride, the church, I mean, it's just staggering. And that's why we're spending some time as we start out this new year. Just talking about how, what it looks like for you and I to partner with the Holy Spirit. To allow him to build or develop Christ's character in us. Probably what you think about when you think about character. One of the most famous quotes that are going to come to your mind come from D.L. Moody. And he has always said it like this. Character is what a man is in the dark. When no one's looking, when you can't be caught or found out, that is your true character revealed. And if you don't like who you are in the dark, if you know it doesn't line up with the baseline of all that you've been taught through the person and teaching and ministry of Jesus Christ and throughout Scripture, it's simply time to make a change. And there's this open invitation follow Jesus day by day, moment by moment, to partner with the Holy Spirit and allow him to do that transforming work in your life. Are you ready to say yes to him? Think about it like this. If if somebody sticks out their hand, it is an invitation to shake their hand. You have a choice. You can extend your hand or you keep it tight by. Somebody reaches out for a hug. It's an invitation You have a choice to say yes and to embrace that hug, or you step back. You go to a coffee shop or restaurant, somebody stands up and they point to the open seat. It's an invitation. You can sit down, or you choose not to. And Jesus extends an invitation to you and to me to allow him to build his character in us, to partner with him in the Holy Spirit and what they would love to do in transforming, growing, developing us, maturing us into men and women after his own heart. So as we go to our prayer time, what does receiving that invitation look like to you? Maybe you're here in person or you're at home or at a coffee shop. For many of us, to receive that invitation just looks like this praying with open hands. Maybe for some of you to just receive that invitation whenever we uh, sing our closing song, man, you just want to raise your hand, just open yourself up to God to accept that invitation. But Jesus will never force himself on you. It is always your choice. May you accept the invitation today. Let's pray. Father, we confess that so often we are more caught up in what the world thinks about us. We're conformed to the world, to what other people think or say about us, and are less and less concerned about what you have to say and what you think about us. So today, I and we, we accept this invitation. We invite the Holy Spirit in to do that transforming work in us to build to develop to mature christ's character in us and in days to week to come every every time we're gonna have a choice to say yes to following you give us that strength of character to say yes to follow you to live by your truth to live by your standards to live by your teaching May you do a great 
spiritual formation work in us. We accept that invitation. We open ourselves up to you. We pray this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us at Crossroads today. This service may have felt just a bit different, but we've still been able to be together, and that's made me incredibly happy. So thanks for joining us today. And as we close, I wanna just highlight three organizations that due to your generous giving have made impacts in our community this year. I think about East Donegal Kanoi Christian Food Bank, Mount Joy Helping Services and Echoes, Elizabethtown Community Housing and Outreach Services. These are just three organizations that Crossroads is for. And due to your generous giving, they've had frontline impacts in our community. And in November, I received a letter from Echoes and there's a wonderful story that they shared with us and I wanna share that with you today. Dear friends, health problems and homelessness often go hand in hand. Josh, a former professional driver suffering from diabetes, sadly knows this well. When neuropathy in his arms and legs damaged his ability to drive, he lost his job. Shortly thereafter, he wasn't working in a car, he was living in one, but he wasn't living alone. Josh's cat Einstein possesses an unusual talent. His remarkable sense of smell allows him to sense when his owner's insulin isn't at the right level. Einstein even alerts Josh with different signals for too high or too low. When Josh reached out to Echoes due to being displaced from his home, he was enrolled in the Elizabethtown Emergency Shelter. While Echoes couldn't accommodate Einstein because of allergies, Josh's shelter case manager recognized just how important Einstein was in supporting Josh. Diligently, staff connected Josh and Einstein with the Sebastian Foundation, who agreed to help foster Einstein until Josh got back on his feet. Now, Josh has found his own home and has reunited with Einstein. Echoes continues to walk alongside Josh in his journey, connecting him with the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation to find stable work. Seeing Josh reunite with Einstein reminded us why we do what we do. My friends, your generosity is supporting lives and changing lives. Thank you. I so appreciate the ways that Crossroads is for our community. I hope you have a great day. Please stay safe. And if you haven't filled out the connection card yet, please do so before you click done and say goodbye to us today. Have a great day, take care, and I will see you next week.